Homages can be a very tricky subject in the watch world. Some people are all for them, stating that it allows those who can't afford the style of a much more expensive watch to be able to enjoy them. However, others say that they're basically as bad as fakes and are blatant copyright infringements and should be burnt and smashed up to smithereens. Personally, I'm in the pro camp. You know, you don't hear people get their knickers in a twist when it comes to food that imitates others. I've never seen someone raging down the aisles at Tesco or Sainsbury's when they come across Tesco's own brand cornflakes or Coca-Cola. And if they were truly illegal, don't you think the likes of Rolex would quickly shut down the reputable Swiss brands who offer homages such as Steinhardt, Squale, Devosa? Now, I'm not talking about proper homage brands such as Pagani Design or Parnis, for instance, as they most likely will just do whatever the hell they want anyway, even if Rolex filed a lawsuit. Now, I have reviewed quite a few Submariner homages, but I've never handled a Pagani design before. At long last, I have one in my hands and on my wrist. I've always wondered if they're actually any good, as they do pack a massive punch for an incredible price. So then let's take a look. Are they really that good? Let's find out. Now I'm not going to pass comment on how this watch looks. After all, Pagani Design have had absolutely nothing to do with the timeless brilliance of the Rolex it is imitating. The only thing on this watch they can take credit for is the logo, which I'll touch on later. The most impressive thing with this Pagani Design is how it fits so much high quality materials into such a cheap package. Let's go through the important specs. Sapphire crystal, ceramic bezel insert, a GMT automatic movement, an exhibition case back, a pretty nice looking bracelet and double locking clasp as well. I mean, that ticks a lot of boxes and for about 60 quid, something has to give, surely. This is why I'm so dubious about the quality. How can they promise so much for so little? I'm gonna try my best to be quite critical in this review. So first up, Sapphire Crystal is pretty simple nowadays. It's a given on watches above 50 quid, or at least it should be. But it's always a nice thing to have, isn't it? For many, it is an absolute requirement on any watches they buy with good reason. Next up is the ceramic bezel insert. I love the look of them. The glossy, polished finish, makes a watch look much more expensive than a standard painted aluminium or steel equivalent. And it just demonstrates a much higher build quality as it does take a lot more to manufacture and they are more expensive. All markings on this example are clean and crisp and it does look excellent to the naked eye. Whilst we're on the 120 click bezel, let's discuss the action, which is possibly the main issue I have with the watch. I don't know if you can hear it. Whilst it's not terrible as such, it has a lot of play, not only in the circular direction, but you can wiggle it up and down and left and right too. It does line up though, to be fair to it, but if you want to use it, it's not particularly pleasurable. The movement fitted within this watch is the Pearl DG5833 GMT. I must admit, I've not really heard of Pearl before. As far as I'm concerned, it's the make of my drum kit I've got at home. But it appears to be a pretty standard Chinese movement that may or may not behave itself. It's gonna be pot luck, if I'm honest. It has a fairly loud rotor. You can hear it spinning as you're wearing it. The positive though, is that the custom print work on the rotor is pretty remarkable on a watch costing this much. The exhibition case back ensures you can see it in its plain, fairly industrial glory. When manipulating and setting the movement, the thread on the screw and crown feels a little tetchy, I must admit. Sometimes you can't quite catch it right and have to reset to avoid any cross-threading, which would be pretty catastrophic. Apart from that though, the rest of the case 
is exceptional for the price. The bracelet, very nicely machined and finished. The polished center link is mirror-like, which look great, but it will likely pick up scratches pretty quickly. The double locking clasp is very nice indeed with a continuation of the polished center, which has Pagani design really well, neatly and deeply engraved along it. It's easy to use and it feels reassuringly sturdy when you're using it. There's a slight wiggle between the links, so you do get a slight amount of rattle, but nothing at all to put me off keeping it on the bracelet. In fact, I would always keep it on the bracelet, that's for sure. The logo then. The only thing on this entire watch that it's original. How does it hold up? Well, I actually think it looks pretty good here. Sometimes those cheapo homage brands have such terrible brand names with revolting fonts and icons. Now, Pagani is hardly a beautiful name, but it does look pretty good on a Rolex homage. The icon itself is also quite pleasing to the eye, a shield shape which plays on a variety of letters. The custom logo is embossed on the end of the screw and crown, which is finished much better than I was expecting. I was thinking either a plain or a laser etched logo at most. The stated 100 meters water resistance is questionable too. Simply put, I wouldn't trust it. It's not the kind of watch that I would take swimming anyway, purely because I wouldn't want to risk it. The rest of the dial is obviously a complete duplication of the Rolex, but it's finished to a remarkable degree, even under a macro lens. Sure, it's not perfect, but I don't have any complaints whatsoever here for the price. The loom is a major disappointment. It's truly abysmal. They may as well not even have bothered it's that bad. However, you know, Loom is always right at the bottom of the list for cost saving, and I always find it to be terrible on cheap watches. So to be honest, it's as expected. Finally, there's one thing left to point out. The Cyclops over the date wheel isn't lined up particularly well. However, it's not necessarily an issue with the functionality of it because it does magnify the date pretty well, but rather the application. So what are my final comments on this watch then? Well, clearly there are issues with the watch. It's not perfect. The bezel has some play, as does the bracelet. The loom is non-existent. The crown thread could be better, but really that's where my grumbling ends. Everything else about this watch is, you know, I've got to hand it to them. It's utterly brilliant for the price. It looks fantastic wears really well, and for the most part, it's actually pretty excellently built. There is a small nagging part of me though that thinks these are quite possibly made in the same factories as replicas, and that it is possibly the replica market and trade that's squeezing the price to quality ratio. Some may be bothered by that, others won't even bat an eyelid. After all, you know, it is complete, hearsay, no proof behind it. And of course, this watch isn't technically a replica, but of course, just the fact that on the other hand, it is a complete homage will make it a complete no-no for some. Whatever the case though, for 60 quid, you will be extremely hard pressed to find a better finished and specced watch. So thank you so much for watching guys. This was the Pagani Batman GMT. Drop a comment like this video, please subscribe as well. I really appreciate it. And let me know what you think about this watch uh, as well. And I'll see you next time. Thank you again. Bye-bye.